what you guys are doing today we are going to look at one of the best ways to build speed and accuracy on the guitar with some single string chop builders roll the intro no intro all right so speed is one of those things that guitar players, well most guitar players, all aim for. They play every exercise and every song as fast as they can. I'm sure we've all been at a guitar center before where we hear some of these riffs being played at 180 BPM. Speed and accuracy aren't necessarily things you need to be a great guitar player, however, if you're aiming to be a great guitar player, chances are you want to be fluid on the instrument, very expressive, unlimited, right? You want speed not to be an issue. And accuracy is probably the most important of the two, right? Because without accuracy, your, your notes are just gonna become a wall of mush and just gonna start compounding on each other, just mud after mud after mud after mud. Beep, beep, beep. A couple principles of speed and accuracy. Speed and accuracy are byproducts of muscle memory. And muscle memory is important because the less your hands have to think about where they go, the faster you can play, the more expressive you can be. And muscle memory is actually just a byproduct of repetition. The irony behind all of this is that if you want to play fast, you're going to have to practice slow. Practice slow. And it goes back to this muscle memory thing, right? If you can't play the passage slow, you for sure cannot play it fast. When you start practicing these passages, you want to play them so slow that you're bored. You have to think about every single stroke. And when you're practicing these sections, it's important to isolate the sections you're having problems with. Say, for example, you're going... And you're noticing you're slowing down on that section. So what I would do, I would isolate the section that's giving me a problem. And I would just play it over and over and over at various tempos because every tempo is going to give you a different challenge. Even narrow that down instead of these one, two, three, four. I would just narrow it down to even oh. Maybe even. You want to get real specific when you're practicing. You want to isolate everything and really find out where the trouble spots are. And as you're practicing these things, you wanna really hold yourself accountable and ask yourself questions. Why am I messing up? Where am I messing up? Am I digging the pick too deep into the string? Am I using the tip? Is my fretting hand applying too much pressure? Am I on the fingertips? Am I moving my fingers too much? And that's just a short list of things that could slow you down when you're practicing. All right, so technique. Technique is like the foundation of a house, right? The house sits on this slab of concrete or lifted, I don't know, it's a slab of concrete. Let's just think about it that way. You can have a, you can have 16 bedrooms. It could be 40,000 square feet. It has like nice windows, a beautifully painted door, the best rain ducts of all. But none of that's gonna matter if the house is built on a crappy foundation, right? It's gonna start cracking, and all those nice things that you like are gonna start kind of like shifting. All that's gonna turn into rubble, right? I have to make sure everything is in place and providing a solid foundation for me to build upon. So let's think about the fretting hand. There's a couple things you want to think about with your fretting hand. One is to stay relaxed. So the more tense you are on your fretting hand, the more pressure you're applying to the strings, you're actually running the risk of, of, of straining your arm, right? And you're not going to be playing for a long time. If you're just like... It's, it's bad news bears, right? You even look at the face that I had, it was just dumb. So stay relaxed on, on your fretting hand. Easy, right? If you look at some of the fastest guys on the guitar, it looks like they're not even playing. They're just like... You know what I mean? Just making it look easy. Two, don't lift the fingers on your fretting hand more than you should. By that I mean if you're going... Right? Look how low my fingers were. Instead of what I see a lot of is... Did you see how much those fingers lift? The more your fingers have to travel f to get to the fretboard, the longer it's gonna take. So instead of going all the way from here, making my finger come from Mars to California, all I have to do is like come from Arizona to California, right? Much shorter distance. You don't wanna be doing this. Another thing you wanna do with your, your fretting hand is to stay on your fingertips. So right here, we have like this fatty part right here. It's kind of like mm, plump and soft right here. A lot of guitar players do that when they start playing like this, but for, for lead work and speed, you want to stay on your fingertips, right? It's a smaller profile when you're playing on the guitar like this. 
and there's more bone here, so you have to actually press less hard, so it's less pressure keeping you light and fast. All right, the picking hand. The picking hand has a lot of responsibility and I feel like we as guitar players don't give the picking hand enough attention. Everyone looks at the fretting hand and expects it to do all the flashy work, but realistically the picking hand does more than half of the work, right? The picking hand has to go, be able to go from a fast stream of notes to a slow stream of notes to back and fast and so forth. It requires some conditioning, right? Think about someone who's jogging and sprinting and then jogging again. That requires a lot of energy and a lot of control and it requires practice. A couple things with your picking hand, same as your fretting hand, you, you don't want to be plowing through your string. You don't want to dig the, the pick in so deep either. You want the tip of the pick to do most of the work. My hand, I'm not powering through the strings. I'm not doing gigantic strokes. I'm keeping them small, concise, and short. And most importantly with the picking hand is stay consistent. Your volume has to be consistent, right? You don't want it to be da 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 right? You want it to be da 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 Even volume. You want to be rhythmically consistent. Da 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 You want the notes to all have the same space between them. The distance between note one and two is the same as distance between two and three, three and four, four and five, and so forth, right? You want it to sound like a machine. That's what we want to aim for. Of course, we're never going to be Guthrie Govin, but we can try. I am not the picking police, so of course, there's always going to be rules to the exception. What I mentioned about technique, fretting hand, and your picking hand is just the general foundation that we want to start building upon, right? Of course, there's players who can play with a very unorthodox picking style. Marty Friedman, I'm looking at you. Um, guys who play from their elbow and guys who flail and get like this, wasting a lot of energy. There's rules to the exception, but as we're building our alternate picking chops, we want to start with a very solid foundation, right? All for the sake of technique. Enough of me blabbing and yabbing but let's get to these exercises. As with anything when it's brand new, with these exercises you want to take it super slow. Grab a metronome and just take it super slow. Make sure you are feeling the pulse. Taka, 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 taka. And then make sure that that pulse is being translated into your hand and you're feeling the downbeat. Chaka, 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 chaka. Even accent the note if you have to. And only increase the tempo when you feel extremely relaxed and comfortable playing every single note. Remember consistency and dynamics and your rhythm. If you're paying close attention to all the details like your consistency and your rhythm and your dynamics at slower tempos, that's gonna compound when you go into the faster tempos and your picking technique's just gonna be echelons of, above everybody. Now the first exercise is actually the exercise we're gonna use as a basis to create other exercises. Exercise one, here we go. With exercise two, we're actually gonna take the same group of notes, same scale, all in the same string, of course, and we're gonna minimize the amount of times we play each fragment. So instead of playing four times, we're gonna play it twice. This is actually gonna make our hands move up and down the fretboard quicker, and it's gonna make synchronization that much more important. We're gonna feel like it's faster. Feels fast. <laughs> All right, one of the best ways to increase your dexterity and your familiarity with the notes of any exercise is to play each note multiple times. So instead of just playing, you're gonna double up on each note. And, and, and so forth, you can play in doubles, in threes, in fours, and so forth. You get the idea, man. Here's exercise three.
Just had to double check that I played it right. All right, so exercises one through three showcase how to take a simple concept, a simple exercise, and expand on it to kind of create new exercises. Pretty much extrapolating a concept and taking it further. You'll also see that the previous exercises were all done in 16 notes, which is four notes per beat. Chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka. It's very easy to feel that subdivision. It's very easy to feel that pulse. Chaka ticka, chaka, chaka, chaka. I mean, I'm not trying to dance, but you know, chaka, 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 whatever. These next group of exercises is actually gonna take the same fragments, the same scale, and apply it to a 16th note triplet. So instead of chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka, four notes per beat, we're actually gonna fit six notes per beat. Chaka ticka ticka, chaka ticka ticka, chaka ticka ticka, chaka ticka ticka, chaka ticka. Gonna throw a curveball because it's not gonna have the same feeling. It's not gonna feel so strict. Chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka, chaka ticka. We have to really feel the the up and down motion and try to feel it as two groups of three if, if that helps you. Chaka, cha chaka, cha chaka, cha chaka, cha down, up, 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 right? Feel that accent, right? It's gonna give you a curveball, but I think something that's helped me, may or may not help you, is to feel the subdivision. Chaka, cha 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 chaka, Right, you want to feel that pulse, and you notice just now that I was moving my head, right? It's very helpful for me to be kinetic with the notes. It helps me like internalize rhythm and it helps me internalize pulse. It also makes you look really weird, but whatever, you're gonna feel the music. <laughs> yeah. So with these exercises, just as the previous ones, you for sure want to set your metronome to a much slower tempo to really feel that sixth tuplet. In exercise five, we're taking the same approach as we did as in exercise two, playing less repetitions of the fragment, making our hands move more up and down the fret. It's gonna feel faster, right? It's also a shorter exercise, which is good. <laughs> that was a lot faster than I anticipated. Similar to exercise three, exercise six takes the same approach in repeating the notes multiple times. It's gonna be a burner. That's it. I hope you had fun with these exercises because they are great starting points to building your chops. When you only have to worry about picking on one string, you're actually removing a couple of variables. When to cross to the next string, what pattern it is, and if the stroke on the next string is gonna be an upstroke or a downstroke. So now we don't have to think about that. When you get comfortable with this, you might wanna start taking these exercises into other strings, right? Because you're gonna notice that each string presents its own challenge, its own feel, its own tension, right? So taking from the first string. Take it to the second string. Right, so forth. Then another thing I would recommend when you're practicing stuff like this is to use a practice log, man. They're great to keep track of your progress, to kind of note where you need help on, where you're excelling at, keep track of your speed, how things feel, the things you practiced. It's just gonna be super helpful for you. And good luck on your lifelong journey to become a complete and continually better player. We all know that it never stops. And don't forget to have lots of fun along the way. I'm watching you.